year ago, uh, where there was wide support for both media studies and film studies. And as a result, we put together two formal cases arguing for these two subjects to be developed. This was submitted and strongly supported by universities, by BFI and NEA and teachers. These subjects were therefore allowed to be developed, but under conditions strictly monitored by the Department for Education and, of course, by Ofcom. So the awarding organisations have worked with representatives from universities, BFI, MEA and teachers to develop a framework for specification development. But here's the problem. The department in particular and Ofqual have not so far accepted the subjects in the form in which it's been proposed to them. Uh, in the very latest development, David Buckingham for the MEA and Natalie Fenton from Goldsmiths, with awarding organisations, met Department for Education officials this week, arguing the case for media studies. And also awarding organisation chief execs are writing to both the DFE and Ofqual about the process and about the criteria that they're using. The deadline has been extended before a decision will be taken. Uh, as of a couple of days ago, that deadline was going to be in a week or two. We've now learned, and this is the latest news flash, that that deadline has been extended by a couple of months. That's right, isn't it, Jeremy? Yes. <laughs> so um, I, I'm sure that that is not a cause either for celebration or for or for relaxation in the efforts that need to be made. Uh, it does give us a chance to ensure that we understand the criteria against which a decision is, would be made or the proposals are being assessed. If you, if you do want to know more, Jeremy's here and I believe Joe Johnson are here, are certainly here this morning. Uh, I don't think they'll be staying for the whole day because they're busy working on this and the latest submission that will be going to the department. Um, but I do think that we owe them a debt for their sterling efforts so far. Yeah. And I'd also like to mention Rob Carlton and Tony Fahey at the OCR and Jessica Loba Newsom at AQA for their huge contribution. You know that you can also find a very useful update of the latest situation at the MEA website. Of course, this effort overall may still not prove to be enough, not least because it's clearly very difficult to convince the DfE and Ofqual the subjects are sufficiently demanding to continue as GCSEs and A-levels. If our case is not accepted, then the university subject associations, both media studies and film, Creative Skillset, the MEA and the BFI, will need to look for ways in which we can make direct representations to bring this state of affairs to the attention of parents, politicians, employers, and other long-term stakeholders. Of course, this is also an opportunity to remind ourselves of why we, as a community with an investment in education, need to continue to support these subjects. First, for me, film and media studies offer one of the few introductions available in the state school sector to the creative industries. By pulling away this run, up to 100,000 young people per year, in any one year, will be denied an opportunity to explore the richness of film as an art form and digital media as an essential medium for communications. Second, it will undermine the continuing growth of film and media studies in higher education. A degree in media studies remains one of the best tickets for employment, second only to medicine. Employment, of course, is not just about working in the TV and film sectors, but in the wider creative sector, now worth £80 billion a year to the UK economy and 5% of it. But of course, the impact extends much more widely. 
when universities encourage such innovations as the video essay for assignments or require students in any subject to read primary sources that exist as film, they're validating the growing awareness that we know that our shared knowledge is locked up in both in the language of moving image as well as that of the printed word. Literacy in both languages is fast becoming a prerequisite of full active citizenship as well as scholarship. Finally, and, and this of course is the topical point, at a time when social media is being powerfully deployed by some of the most anti-social forces of terror in our world today, we are reducing the capacity of our young people to understand both the medium and the message. More than ever, youngsters need the skills and insights to be able to take charge of the media that is shaping their worldview. At the very least, we need a wider public consultation on how our education system can equip future generations with the skills and tools to manage an increasingly demanding media environment and to shape their own identity within it. I think our work here at the BFI is one cornerstone to help to support that shared ambition. Through our delivery partner into film, we now have a film club in every, almost every other school in the UK, the largest non-curricular cultural activity in the education system. We've also secured the funding of the BFI Film Academy for a further year, and research continues to demonstrate its effectiveness in instilling a long-term ambition to work in film or other creative production. And we're planning to build on the success of initiatives that begin their life right here in BFI South Bank. In your delicate packs, of course, you'll find details of the upcoming education program. But just to pick out one event, the Future Film Festival has clearly outgrown this home. This year, there was a record number of entries over 1,300 from 15 to 25-year-olds filmmakers, with more than 1,000 attendees from all over the UK and abroad. It's a clear indication of demand. And we want to ensure that the impact of this festival, our third after the London Film Festival and BFI Flair, is felt across all four nations. The under-25s are now a focus of attention for our education and skills-related activities. We've realized that so much of what we are already doing is in recognition of that generation's needs and ambitions, whether it's a response to their creative energy, or to their lack of opportunity, or to their ability to transform the film and media landscape. We want to make sure that our future plans help to harness that energy not just in London, but throughout the UK. In fact, to return to the earlier theme, it may well be the case that the only force that can reinstate media education effectively in our education system, not just as a set of qualifications, but also as a necessary set of skills across all forms of learning, is engagement with that non-curricular and spontaneous energy for creative media that's so characteristic of young people today. So, before I hand over to Gavin from Creative Skillset, who's going to share the next session, session, I'd like to thank you very much for listening to me and have a great conference. Thank you. <laughs>